Hi, how are you doing? Today I'm going to talk about bipolar transistor biasing circuits and why they are important. So, what biasing is? A brief description about biasing is set the quiescent point, also known as Q point, for a transistor. To explain it a little better, I will appear with my whiteboard magically in a few seconds. I'm kidding, it's not space magic, it's just artistic integrity. <laughs> nah, it's just time travel thing and uh. <laughs> so before I continue to explain you why you have to bias your amplifier I want you to show you the voltage and current relationship and I just uh, draw a, a NPN transistor for your reference uh, so here's the base, the collector and the emitter and you have the uh, current emitter voltage the collector current and the base current. So, this is the uh, current and voltage relationship for this transistor. And these lines, these blue lines, are a different uh, current and voltage relation for different base currents. And as you can see, uh, this chart is divided in three re regions because your transistor can operate in three different ways. You have the cutoff region where your transistor uh, behaves like an open circuit and you have the saturation region where your transistor behaves like a wire, like a short circuit and you have the active region where your transistor uh, is linear and it behaves like an amplifier, like an, a current amplifier. And if you, if you pay attention, uh, you will see that uh, here you have one microamp of base current and there you have 0 0.1 milliamps of uh, collector current. Here you have 10 microamps, 1 milliamp, 0 0.1 milliamps of base current and 10 milliamps of uh, collector current. So as you can see, there is a proportionality uh, relation between these two currents and that proportionality the proportionality constant is known as beta and in this in, in this case is 100 so if you have uh, one microamp you will obtain 100 times that in your collector so for one microamp you will obtain uh, 100 milli uh, microamps in your collector so, biasing your transistor is to select in which way, in which way uh, your transistor is going to behave. You can bias your transistor for uh, work in the cutoff region or for working in saturation or in active region. Normally you uh, bias your transistor for working in the active region because it's the region where it behaves like a like a current amplifier and maybe it's the most useful useful zone of, of operation and the best point uh, the best point uh, for make you your transistor a good amplifier is in the middle of the active region so here's the the Q point the Weissen point the work point and it is in the middle of the uh, active region and I think that is for now. Now uh, I'm going to, to draw a simple biasing circuit and I will do the calculations and I will do something very interesting. So here is my uh, biasing circuit, it's very simple. I have just two resistors and one power supply, one for setting the base current and the other one is for setting the collector and emitter voltage because uh, as you know the collector current is proportional to the base current and uh, I want to convert that current into a voltage drop so I can meet my uh, biasing point specification that is here. Uh, I set my bias point to collector current equals 45 milliamps and collector emitter voltage is equal to 4.5 volts 4 volts and a half 
So, and I, I did the calculations and it came up with these two values for the resistors and the beta of the transform of the transistor uh, I measured it uh, because I'm going to use this uh, transistor and I just measure this beta and as you can see here is the, the tiny transistor so this is the, the gain, the current gain of uh, this transistor so I'm sure that this uh, circuit is very reliable and I'm going to build it in a breadboard and show you the very interesting thing so uh, I built my, my circuit, the previous circuit that I showed you uh, so here it is there are two resistors because I didn't have a 31 kilo ohms resistors so I, I just put uh, two, uh, 62 uh, kilo ohms resistors in parallel and this is the 100 uh, ohms resistor and this is the BC546A uh, transistor and this is just a LED it, it looks cool so what the hell now? So, yeah. And for my power supply I use a 9 volt battery and I'm going to to show you the collector emitter voltage. As you can see the collector emitter voltage is very close to the one that we calculated and what do you think how reliable is this circuit? So, I'm going to show you how reliable it is warming it up, warming the transistor with my solder, my iron. So, behold. Whoa! Where are you four and a half volts? They have gone! <laughs> This circuit is not reliable at all because it depends so much in the beta, the constant proportionality, the proportionality constant. And now it is uh, calling down, and as you can see, when it arrives to the room temperature. It has its original value, but this circuit is not reliable because it depends very much on temperature. Let's try it again. Again, it's very funny. <laughs> As you warm up the transistor, the beta increases, and that makes the collector current to increase. And this circuit is not. Uh, temperature reliable. To make a good biasing circuit you have to implement some kind of feedback and I will show you how to do it in the next chapter because I'm running out of time and I'm just going to show you uh, how the transistor beta uh, varies with temperature. Okay, 188 do you want to see what happens when I warm it up? Awesome, isn't it? Isn't it? Now it's cooling down. And again it's going down as well. So, when you bias your transistor, you have to do a biasing that is reliable on temperature change. Because if it is not one cold day or warm day, your circuit is not going to work just because the ambient temperature. And it's crazy! <laughs> I will show you how to fix these things, these kind of problems in the next chapter. So, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it so much. Blah. See you. <laughs>